All right, here we go. Brown and Lawhead, Mighty 1090, ESPN. You already know where to find us if you're driving in the car because you can hear us on the Mighty 1090 ESPN. Big announcement coming next week for the station, for all the shows involved. It should be interesting to see what people think. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> big, big show. And anything you see, hear or see on today's show can be found on YouTube and it can be found in the iTunes podcast store. If you visit any of those two situations, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, our numbers are very consistent, but everybody likes to see things go up. We're like the housing market. Just let it keep going up. Keep going up. We're like gas prices. Just keep going up. Just keep going up. On the show today, is there trouble between Katie and the Nets? We'll get to the bottom of that. Heat, Celtics, more hoop. Brittany Griner's wife was interviewed. I know a lot of you, that story's kind of gone off the map considering today's, yesterday and today's news, but we might dive into a little bit of that. Uh, we'll talk about the game yesterday and and with, between the Warriors and the Mavs and why it may be important and why it may not be important. So you stick around for that. And we've got to, we'll, we'll get to something else that every show should be talking about. But before I do that, Jason, what's up, brother? Got to introduce my co-host, Jason Lawhead. Famous comedian, world traveled, uh, married a beautiful woman, young, which shows you what he's working with down low. What up, Jason? What up, my man? Hanging you doing all right there. today? It's uh, no, yeah, I'm man. Not. It just keeps going, man. It's just the same no. old, the same old garbage that just keeps going. But uh, head up, you know. I mean, that's all we can kind of do uh, is head up and you know try to hope for the best. And I mean, it ain't a, a thought and a prayer ain't gonna help, but you know. Anyway, I, I, you know, we for any person on the planet, OK, that listens to sports radio or sports entertainment for a escape from whatever it is you're trying to escape from. I get that. I understand that. But some topics you should not be able to escape from. There should be no place that you can go where what happened in Evaldi, Texas, isn't the only thing that people are talking about. There should be no escape on your phone. There should be no escape on your radio. There should be no escape on your television. There should be no escape on your emails. And I feel that way specifically for this reason. The children in that school had no escape for what happened to them. There was nowhere for them to go. There was nothing that could have stopped them from what happened to them. But what I can tell you is this. We, because we cannot turn this into a let the politicians figure it out. We as citizens have an opportunity and we as citizens have an obligation to protect the children of our society. This is, this is different. When what happened in Newtown happened, as gut-wrenching as it was, as bad as it was, because I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Every time there's one of these shootings, these people, they always find a way to reference Chicago. Oh, look at the violence in Chicago. And I would, and I always said this 100%. I said they could shoot up a gay place. They did. Black people can kill each other left and right. They do. They can shoot up a movie theater. They did. And they can shoot up a high school. They did. Grocery store. I mean, you can go down the list. Walmart, Home Depot, Walmart. I said, if the only thing that can stop this is if they kill a bunch of white kids. And they did in Newtown. And, and nothing did. happened. Well, you know, they shot a, they shot a, I mean, they literally shot a, 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 a congressman at a softball game. They shot, I mean, they shot one of their rally. I mean, these people, the money coming in from the NRA is so much that they're willing to get shot at a softball game and not do anything. The people actually voting on these things. Steve Scalise, willing... Steve Scalise is the person who we're speaking of who, and people go, oh, it's, it's, it's uh, right, right wing rhetoric that drives these people to shoot somebody like Gabby Gifford. The guy who shot Steve Scalise was a, 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 a far left democratic follower. So stop that. Well, he was a burning Stop guy, that. so he was even beyond Demi. Like he was like left to the. He was right. like what the left Tea Party is on the right. He was on the left. Yes. So I. This isn't what about ism. This is about stopping guns. 
This is about stopping guns. This is about saving lives. Because the gun that keeps showing up at all these shootings, AR-15, that if something continues to show up in every single situation where we have one of these, why can't we all just go, all right, that thing has to go? Why does a person need that? These children, because I'm going to keep saying children because that's what they were. We are so desensitized to death in this country that we always can just turn the page. We can turn on first take. We can turn on uh, uh, first things first. We can turn on some sports show and they don't open the show with it. And if you don't open the show with it, you are a coward. To any, any, any profession, if you do not open your show talking about what happened to those children because you're the quote unquote escape from from you're a coward you're a coward because if one of your children would have been gunned down and you showed up to work you would have talked about it so have some empathy have have some sort of pride for your country and what we can do and stop talking about what we cannot do because the problem with a lot of people and i'm included in this is that i feel helpless on this topic because there's nothing an individual can do other than getting more people together and sounding this alarm everywhere. And so if you speak into a microphone, you sit in front of a t- uh, in front of a camera and they broadcast your broadcast out into wherever they stream it or beam it to. And you don't talk about this. You're part of the problem. You're a coward too. Yeah. If you're voting, you're a for, coward too. If you're voting what do we need for to people talk about that gun take... does, does somebody need to walk into a playoff game and start shooting people? Will that make it on sports topic now? Yeah. Like, like wh- but that's what, what the NRA's what? bought over all these years. That's what they've bought and paid for. They've bought and paid for. They've invested in the long game, which is desensitivity. And they yes. know that that's what they've paid for. They've paid for us to turn the page and get used to it. And that's what they've bought with these politicians and lobbyists over the years is they've bought the desensitivity instead of the sens- sensationalism of, of what is really going on. And that's the sad part. And, and you know, you're right. There's a lot, you know, look, if, 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 you're, if you're voting, for people that take family photos with with assault rifles, they got one stuck in the dog's mouth. They got grandma holding one on a Christmas card. You're part of right. the problem. I don't care what your, you know, your thoughts are on policy or taxes or or whatever. And you know, the sad part is deep down, and this may turn some people off, and this may offend some people, or so this may pe- make people uh, feel, uh, uh, you know, whatever you want to talk about. But I, I've kind of. Uh, uh, I'll be 50 this year and I've lived from pre uh, assault ban rifle to this carnage that we've been dealing with. And, and you can blame a lot of things. You can whine about immigration. You can whine about the welfare state or inner city violence or, or whatever it is, or, or the family. But I'm going to tell you something in my experience and my experience The 21st century conservative Christian has ruined this country. It had collectively as a group, they've ruined this country. They project everything. Listen, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're one of these God, if you got a fam, if you got a wife and kids and you're one of these God first family second, you got problems, dude. You have some problems brainwashed problems if you've got children if you've got a community if you've got a family and you're over there going god one family two country three get 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 looked at get looked at because that's the ultimate ruin of what's going on is this jesus loves guns attitude and you know i mean it is you know i'm the seventh child and this is this is what's crazy is i This happened yesterday, right? So I'm the seventh kid. Five and six in my family are twins. They're a boy-girl twin. And uh, when they were in junior high at Longfellow School in Lorain, Ohio, I think I want to say circa 1980, 81, I I kind of vaguely remember it as a little kid, it happening. A troubled kid came to school with a handgun. I forget the kid's name. It was like Sherman Williams, I think. Almost It almost Sherman, not Sherwin. But 
there was a he went and he brought a gun to school and he shot and almost killed a guidance counselor and then mm. fired some other shots. And had we had today's gun laws and politicians then, who knows if my my brother Matt and my sister Marine would even have lived that day because the only way this kid eventually they were able to save people is he ran out of bullets. <laughs> oh. He ran out of bullets. And by the time the police responded, they were able to get this kid because he ran out of bullets. He had more. He had more on him. Uh, but he he was firing through the hallway and kids were running for their lives. My brother actually jumped out of a school window and ran home. I mean, that's not a lie. That is 100 percent true. And um, so I think about that when and, and they celebrated a birthday yesterday. Right. I think about that. I think about my parents. And if we had today, if we were what we were then today, um, just mm. twisted and perverted with this gun lust of just, uh, you know, and these people that, you know, are so proud of their collection and they show it off and they put the guns in their kids' hands and they take Christmas. I mean, this is a sickness. It's an illness. It's, it's unique to this country and this country alone. And um, and, let, and let's stop, let, let's stop right there, because you say something that's very, very important to this conversation. And again, we're going to we're having this conversation. I, if you're upset, call Bill Hagan. I don't care. <laughs> I know. I, know I, I really I don't care. It's 6 p.m. on a Wednesday. You've heard all the, you know, takes about sports. You're right. C call and complain if that's who you the, are. The illness that is guns in this country. It's only magnified when you look around the world. They have mentally ill people in every country, in every city, in every in every town. There's a mentally ill person, so that cannot be the answer. And stop putting it on the mentally ill. These people are mentally ill. Most most mentally ill people. That's that's what they love to do. They want to project. They want to call. Oh, it's a mental problem. It's a video game problem. Um. You know, it's the uh, it, it's it's talking to people on the internet. Like, look, man, every country has these exact. Canada has the exact same thing. Mexico, there are our bordering countries have the exact same things that we have. You know what they don't have in Canada? Massive access to guns. You know what they got in Mexico? Massive access to guns. Do you see any of this? No. Around the world, there have been mass shootings, and the people in charge of those countries. The next day went, nah, nope, no more of this. No more of this. So the idea that it's, and by the way, this kid who did this, he had no history of mental illness. Because I, uh, I keep telling people this as well. A mentally ill person, okay, a truly mentally ill person cannot function properly. Yeah, they don't, they can't deal, they can't organize this. They walk and they scream up the street not wearing shoes. Right. Those are mentally ill people. Exactly. These, the kid who shot up that grocery store was angry. The kid who shot up the school was angry. That's not mentally ill, no. okay? These are people. They're who have this guy driving three three hours to a gro to a specific grocery store. This kid's killing his guy. He's heading towards a elementary school. This is because this he is was not... bullied. He was bullied. Well, go kill Stop your bullies that. then. You whack thank you, cow. thank you. Stop These it. Little with kids this. didn't bully you. This, this attitude that they could just. Throw these blanket issues. The second they start saying mental illness, now we have to accept the fact, and this is how they soften people up. I'm I, I'm talking about this because I want I've worked in the media for 15 years. 15 years I've worked in the mass media in some form, whether it be newspaper, whether it be television, whether it be radio. I've internet as well, by the way. I've worked in every form of mass media. I'm telling you, this is how the playbook works. They they blanket some statement, mentally ill, which now causes them to say, okay, well, this is a one-off. We all know it's not a one-off because, damn it, it happened two weeks ago at a grocery store. So now that we know that it's not a one-off, and now you want to tell me that this person is mentally ill, the people that the police department, he this man was known to the police department. He had no history of mental illness. So now for this particular one, that's off the table. And to address this mental illness issue, you cannot drive, by the way, and scout multiple locations, then drive three hours and then live stream it. That's not mentally ill. That's no, angry. That's we calculated. need to know the difference. We need to call things as we see them because I'm getting tired of watching these people 
go on television and say, oh, they're mentally ill. It's not mentally, it's not mental illness. It's anger. It's it's gross, well, it's disgusting, and it it's comes from the same anger. group. It comes from the same group that projects everything, right? Like clearly in our face, right? They want to they want you to believe that you know uh there, there's pizza shop cabals grooming yeah. kids for uh being trans when, when right in the front of their own face there's proof every single day and for decades and centuries that their churches and their pastors are doing it every day i mean it just came out again in indiana it just came out again and they want to just go go to church on sunday be a god father be be da, 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 go go follow your religion da, 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 when it's and and these pizza shop cabals and and Hillary Clinton they 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 they're running a sex ring. No, the place you're going to give money to every Sunday is every Damn, single man. Sunday. Every time they're the ones. They've been doing it for centuries, decades, days, weeks, hours. It comes out every single day. Every day there's more proof that a new church or a new pastor or a new priest is grooming and and having you know their way with your children it isn't some made up basement in a pizza shop but you have but see they have to make that up like they have to make up video games and mental illness because you know they can't actually look at what a real problem is you know they're going to vote for the real problem and then they're going to blame another problem mental illness but they're going to vote against anything that might help that <laughs> it's right. insane it's insane we, it, it, it it's such a low point in our society it's such a it's it's such a triggering moment for so many people because every time we have an Evaldi, every parent in newtown has to wake up and be have the same gut-wrenching feeling that all 18 of these parents of these second third and fourth graders now have like the the idea that every time there is a mass shooting. The family of, of, of the Stonewall Douglas parents and kids, they have to relive this. Columbine, they have to relive this. This, I, this idea that we're just going to gun our way through this problem. Because that's, for one side, for one side of the solution, that's their answer. More guns. Because, by the way, the grocery store shooting. That guy was shot by an off-duty police, a retired police officer. He was wearing body armor. The guy who was shooting at him wasn't. Bang, 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 mowed him down. This guy shot an ATF agent and a border agent, if I'm not mistaken, but he shot two cops, one in the head that will survive, injured another one. Thankfully, they both will survive because he had body armor and assault rifles. A, a person who you hire, because this is the next thing, oh, we'll put, we'll put security at the schools. They won't have body armor and AR-15s. Well, they wasn't won't. there. A, there was a secure. Uh, wasn't there a security officer yes. that went and hid? Yes. And yes. then so they had That's to wait for the border patrol. They, they had to wait here. for you know, uh, more good guys. You know, the good guy with the gun isn't always brave. <laughs> you know, the, the good guy with the gun you put in that situation. He's like, I ain't getting killed. I'm just doing this for eleven dollars an hour. The, the sad part, and and the truly utterly sad part about arming teachers that literally makes my that makes me want to punch anyone in the face who says this is that teachers are underpaid in this country at such a gross disgusting amount that now you want them to somehow purchase a gun do training and and teach kids when you won't even fund books like look at some look at the condition that some of these schools are in and now you want to add another thing, by the way, far worse to their criteria of things to learn and do. When they're in an overcrowded classroom, in an underfunded school, and now you want to put up, make them carry weapons? Come on, yeah. man. Like, there's an easy solution to this. There's an easy solution. And it's okay, because according to statistics, 90% of people want some type of common sense gun control. You won't. You're not going to lose your seat. You're not going to lose your job as a as a as a a senator or, or a house member or a governor or a mayor or an alderman because you want this you're not going to lose your job because because people with people who can function and who can think they want to be safe too yeah i mean you got to be you'd be you you almost have to be suicidal to get into teaching these days in america 
It's almost like a, it's like Ohio passed a gun law that goes into effect on June 13th. The Ohio, you know, conservative Ohio state Senate and everything. They passed basically on June 13th. It's fair. It's, it's a, it, it's literally a free range out there. You don't need ID. You don't need anything registered. You get to carry open. You don't have to conceal anything. You don't have to have any paperwork. Hey, you go get as many guns as you want. Have fun, Ohio. I mean, my home state has crumbled under this just twisted sickness of the guns. And what does our governor do? Oh, we're going to fly our flag at half mast for the victims. Good job. Good job, guys. That'll help, huh? The old flying half a mass. flag, flying a flag at half mass in Dawson prayers have saved so many lives Sorry. to this point. I was you telling would, my, you would, I was telling my wife last night. I gotta get this. In. I gotta tell my wife last night about the thoughts and prayers thing. I said I, I got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna write a movie called "It's a Terrible Life." It's like a spoof on "It's a Wonderful Life," but it's a terrible life. And the famous line at the end is uh, one of the kids says. Uh, a teacher says any time a thoughts and prayers is said, more kids end up dead. And, uh, you know, it's like, this is where we are. This is where we are. We'll try to talk about some sports when we come back. Maybe yeah. we will, maybe we won't. Who cares? Brown and Lawhead, Mighty 1090. Brown and Lawhead, we are here on the Mighty 1090 on our Friday, trying to lighten the mood at this point. We, we yeah. again, we gave you our thoughts on the situation that happened in Evaldi on the first half of this podcast. Uh, we we understand that other people don't believe what we believe, and we are open to that because this is America, and this is what makes us great. We are a show that is open to other ideas and other ways of doing things, but we also are not going to hold our tongue when we feel like something needs to be addressed because we have the freedom to do so. And if we will, and when if we don't. If we lose that freedom, this show will go away because I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be told to do that, and I, neither is he. So we are here to try to give you sports and try to give you entertainment. So anything you want to know or hear about that happened on the first half of the show, please head over to YouTube or please head over to the iTunes podcast store. Like, share, subscribe. or under the, the uh, Kaplan and Crew uh, banner on, in those two platforms. There was a lot of sports. Some of it uh, delayed because of rain, but we also have breaking news. Not, I mean, not breaking, but there's reports surfacing in Brooklyn that Kevin Durant hasn't spoken to the Nets since the offseason started, that now they're not willing to offer Kyrie Irving an extension, which, again, they're publicly telling Kyrie, please don't come back. And I know there was a Warriors game that we'll get to. And I know that the John Gruden arbitration case is, is moving forward. But and I know we got a Heat Celtics game tonight. But this is this is the the hot stove level of what people really talk about. If the Nets are taking control of their organization, and I'll make this a local story, the Lakers need to follow suit. Yeah. This I this idea. Mm -hmm. That the Nets front office, the general manager is going, if this don't work, I'm going to get fired anyway. Right. So if Kevin Durant is upset that what I said about Kyrie, if I'm Sean Marks and Kevin Durant is upset about what I said about Kyrie Irving, brother, we got you on the contract for two more years. Ye be upset. Our goal is to put a better team around you. We hope he opts out. We're giving him every indication. We're publicly speaking about him to opt out. And he, to his credit, is out there speaking, Kyrie Irving that is, speaking on every podcast that'll have him. So, if I'm the Nets, I don't want to extend him. We're going to make it public that we don't want to extend him. And we're going to make it public slightly that we don't want him back by saying things that we need people who are committed to play basketball. Yeah, I'm curious on the whole Durant thing. If um, this, you know, this supposed non-communication, if there is something to it more than he's on just Twitter, a guy so on he, he ain't hard to find. He's on Twitter. Yeah, right. No, I'm just saying, like you know, sometimes guys just like I, I need, I need to forget that season, and I'll, I'll get back to these guys after I go to Malta or wherever I go for a few minutes and do whatever I got to do. But 
if there is, I, I'm curious to know whether it's something Durant doesn't um, see eye to eye now with Kyrie. If there's something as he looks in the rearview mirror of this season, he goes, what, 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 we can't get when we get swept by Boston. We're not getting out of it. We're, we're, we're not. I mean, we're, we that's a huge regression for a team that thought where they would be. Right. It's one thing to go through a bumpy ride of the regular season. But once you get yourself together and you got your players playing and it's playoff time to get put out like that. I mean, they were just put out like a wet cat. <laughs> for the playoff, like, they were just like, get out of here. Like, like they were nothing like, it, you know, and uh, that's got to kind of, you know, start to, you, when you kind of think about the whole season and you look back as, as a guy like KD at those levels, you know, a guy that's, you know, only got so much time left and he's, he's, he wants to win championships for his legacy. You know, I mean, he's got to evaluate and go, who are my teammates? Who is the coach? What's going on? What am I up against? Where is the better place for me maybe to get to if I can get out of here to, to you know, um, see a at least a, a type of scenario or a roster that can get us towards a Eastern Conference Finals to give me a chance because uh, right now the way things look in – Brooklyn. I mean, Simmons came and then he he crawled under. Never a showed rock. up. Yep. Yeah. And that was like you know. So then Kyrie comes and you know Kyrie's a great one on one offensive scorer. There's no doubt about it. But a lot of guys have been in this league that have never done anything, and you forgot about. I mean, there's a million guys that scored a lot of points and made a lot of guys on defense look bad in one on one situations and didn't do anything. Adrian Dantley, Alex English. I mean, there's a million guys. The out list there. is the list is a mile long of guys. It's who a got mile long of guys NBA. that can that could have scored like Kyrie Irving scored. Now we see him every day more than all these other guys because nothing was on TV, and you see, right. you know, three or four moves in a game where you're like, wow, oh wow. I mean, well, guys like that did that in tiny Archibald. Like I said, names like that. You know, these guys all over for the history of the league. So to call him one of the great elite players is is i think a little bit uh you know over deserved uh, and i because... also think i also think when we when we localize this and talk about what's happening with the lakers there's now reports as well that they're basically buckling down to have russell russell westbrook back because nobody will take him right and they got to pay him no matter what. They could cut him if they want, but it's, he's, 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 he's still four. He's still forty-one million on the table that they're he's their, their own. Highest, he's their highest paid player. Yeah. So you, you're going to now bring him back. You're going to bring Anthony Davis back, and you're going to bring LeBron James back. That's your team. So the, outside of that, after the year that they had last year, no guys looking to come to that roster on a one-year deal to make a championship run because that they're, they're going to be doing that for the Clippers now. They're going to be doing that for Golden State. There are too many other right. teams around the league now that guys can go, all right, I'll take less money but because I, I know I'm going to have a chance to win a championship. The right. Lakers are off that list. Yeah, and it has a lot to do with that front office and the coaching situations, not just, you know, obviously it, it stems from parts of, you know, how LeBron kind of moves the needle there. But yeah. that's where it is, right? So, like, you're right. So the one-year term deal guy is going over there going, well, you know, Ty Lue's locked down in the – in LA and as a Clippers head coach, and they've got some talent. Uh, 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 the name's escaping me right now. Uh, Phoenix For the coach. Clippers? Um, oh, no. Monty Williams. Monty Williams. Monty Williams. I mean, hey, hey, yeah, Phoenix may have had a disappointment this year with the way they went out, but they've got Monty Williams and and they're a nice landing spot. Oh, the Denver Nuggets, Mike Malone. He, he's a great coach. They've got a good landing spot there. He's, he's locked down. I mean, you start looking at it, I mean, and you can start going, you know, there's a famous, as you said, like, at some point, the the Laker front office, they've got to take control of their franchise. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that old Rick Pitino when he took over as coach and president of basketball operations, and he had that but famous speech. Larry Bird's not walking through that door. Kevin McHale, uh, Kevin McHale ain't door. walking through that door. Robert Parrish ain't walking through that door. Uh, right now for the late Los Angeles Lakers, Jeannie Buss isn't even walking through that door. She's not <laughs> making a decision. Rob Polinka's not walking through that door. Nobody's walking through the door. That's being barricaded by LeBron James. I mean, they're just kind of letting it happen. So, uh, and you make a good point about you know, yeah, Brooklyn is you know, it, w will it set them back a year or two on the on talent wise if if, if su supposedly you know Kyrie might leave or or Kevin Durant maybe, but at least you take control of your franchise and you 
you try to roster build back and, you know, um, at some point and maybe start from a little bit of scratch and, and use some of the guys that you've got uh, that, that want to be there that you think you can win with around. But I mean, right now, these two franchises that have so much talent under such a big market uh, you know, microscope uh, had two just terrible seasons and they're going to be the big off season stories. No matter who wins the title, it's going to be current, Brooklyn and LA. Look at the current NBA and look at the current four teams that are still remaining. Golden State, their their best players are all homegrown. Mm -hmm. The Boston Celtics, their best players are all homegrown. Mm -hmm. The uh, 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 the Dallas Mavericks, their best player, I mean, because they really only got one guy, mm -hmm. drafted, homegrown. Brunson drafted as well. I mean, you know, he gives them a big home spark. Grown. Homegrown. The Miami Heat have a bunch of undrafted and second round guys and late first round guys basically carrying all the water for them. Right. So this idea that the quote unquote super team has returned, it's just not. A, it, it, I think that era of basketball is over. It is. I, I really think that it's I really think it's over. If you watch a guy like Luca play, if you watch a guy like Giannis or you watch a guy like Jokic, these guys can dominate the game by being a one a one singular entity. One guy with shooters, penetrate kick, penetrate kick. That's what it's turned into cuz no one defensively can stop him because the rules have changed so much to the tone of offense, you cannot guard these dudes. You cannot guard them. And until that changes, Give me the offense. Give me the dominant ball handler because I feel like I can get further with that guy than I can with the way that the things used to be. Mm -hmm. Like the, the the Lakers roster is a great example of something that once worked, and then the tide changed. But it was a very small window them. that worked in a very small window. Yes, and you had to have, you know, you had to have the greatest. Two the players the at the top level playing at the time for that experiment to work. And I just feel like you're right. That shifted. And now with the way the salaries are, if you try to do that, you find yourself in this situation where three guys have already put you over the cap. Like the Lakers. And you got to hope that these three guys are such at their peak top level and they're not missing really any games throughout the season that at least burden your win-loss record and put you in a good spot to land a great seed and and feel good about where you're going into the playoffs. It's it's being it's roster built teams, right? I think that yes, you need a you need a special player still, a Jimmy Butler, a Giannis, a, a, a Devin Booker. Uh, uh, but I think what you're starting to see a little bit more with Boston in there and and Dallas last year, Phoenix and some of these other teams, maybe Utah didn't exactly get it right, but it looked like they were they were working to get it right. Mm -hmm. Denver in situations with, with you know if they can get Murray back, these are roster built teams. Yes, they have a special player, maybe two, but. It, 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 this isn't some big three and Udonis Haslam on the baseline anymore. So last night's game between the Warriors and the Mavs was I, I in observing this game, I would tell you Steve Kerr threw this game away. This yeah, was a course. game that if the Warriors won great, if they didn't, who cares? Because in the second quarter, Steve Kerr had Damian Lee, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Moses Moody, uh, uh, Bielitsa, whose first name I can't remember, and Clay Thompson on the court. It was a one point. It was a one possession game when they checked in together. By the time they checked out, they were down twelve points, and that mm -hmm. was pretty much the that was pretty much the end of the game. So I I I don't know what the point of Steve Kerr doing that was, but I will tell you this: be careful with that, because if you go out in game five and Steph Curry gets a high ankle sprain, what are, what are you? Because yeah. Jordan Poole's been terrible. Terrible. So I, I think this is a very risky gamble with an old team that they made last night. And we'll see if it comes back to haunt them. Because I don't I don't think the loss means anything, quote unquote, no. to the Warriors. I don't think it hurt. And I don't think the, the Mavericks in their locker room think they can win the series now. Because I think they kind of know, too, they gave us one. Sure. Because actually, the you know, they, they played a pretty good decent second half golden state you know uh it was mostly a kind of a first half nosedive right and uh yeah i think he and if, look if i'm steve kerr and i get i get the sentiment like man you can go out and get 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 step on a high ankle sprain that can happen anytime right that can happen in yes. game one that can happen in game two but if i'm a steve kerr guy 
and I, I don't know if anybody loses on purpose, but maybe you're sitting there going, I'm going to get Kaminga minutes. I'm going to get some of these yeah. guys minutes in the first half of this game, because if we do lose it fine. And the other thing is, is I, I, I think he's going to need Kaminga in a matchup against either Miami or Boston. Just, I think he'll need, this isn't the kind of matchup where he needed Kaminga much. Right. I think, right. but in the next series, no matter who he plays, and if you're up three Oh, with the way the NBA playoff schedule is designed, you're looking over at this schedule, this series, and you're going, well, they're 2-2, and it looks like it's going to go 3-3, three, three, and whoever's going to win, it's going to win it in seven. I don't want my team feeling like they had a month off and not playing basketball. So and Kaminga, and sometimes Kaminga going you- five or six can be beneficial just to keep the oil, you know, the the, the wheel stuck. greased a little bit. And to, and to your credit, Kaminga played 22 minutes last night, had 17 points and eight rebounds. So maybe he's looking for things, right? So maybe it's a, it's so a nice maybe, game to be up 3-0 knowing you're going home after this one, you know, uh, for game five. Maybe it's a, hey, we're going to try to get some guys minutes. We're going to get them a feel. We're going to get them on the floor in certain rotations because I think Kaminga with this lineup may help us in Boston or Miami. And maybe it's just kind of a, a little bit of, you know, using game four as maybe a uh, a, a practice session, almost. I think uh, Moses yeah. Moses Moody as well, because he was he was playing in the game, mm-hmm. but he was more for de- defense, and he made a couple shots. He made a couple threes, saw a couple threes go in as well, and so I think I think that that had a lot to do with it. Now, again, I don't like it because this is what they did when they were up three one against the Cavs in the finals, mm-hmm. and then Draymond Green ended up kicking LeBron James in the man regions, got suspended for Game Six, and then the next thing you know, all hell broke loose. The Cavs won the championship. So. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it, but I understand it. Because you also allow a guy like Maxi Kleber to make shots. You also allow a guy who went 0 for 7 in the last game to come in and start making shots. And so now these guys got confidence as well. And so it, it's just a gamble to take. As a coach, I probably wouldn't have done that because I think it's better to have getting the series over. But I also agree with you from the standpoint of it's also better to have still your legs right, your timing right. The, the mm-hmm. wheel to be greased because this next one looks like it's going the other one like it's going seven. Right. You don't want Boston or Miami coming in there battle tested after a big game six or seven win that thrusted them in. And you've been sitting around just doing shooter rounds Wait. for the last week and a half and right. having to find yourself in game one because as we, you know, but but as we said, uh, I think as I looked yesterday, I'm not sure who wins the tiebreaker. I uh, who, who if the Heat. I think the Heat and the Warriors have the exact same record. If, if if the Heat get in, I don't know who's the who is the home court. I don't know what the tiebreaker is. If there's a head on a head to head, I didn't look at that. But the the Warriors would have home court over Boston for sure. With that, they they've got I think a game win on them or two games on them. So let's talk about that series because that that series has been anybody's guess. And it, in my personal opinion, it's been some of the most unwatchable basketball I've seen in the playoffs in a long time. The idea that one team can blow another team out by 20 and then vice versa on each team's court, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't compute. It doesn't, right. it doesn't make any logical sense to where how you can pick the next game. So I have no idea what's going to happen in this game. I'm not rooting for anybody. I would like right. to see a basketball game in the fourth quarter within a possession or two worth watching. But I don't know if I'm going to get that tonight. I really don't. Both teams are banged up. But this is the attrition that comes when guys play as hard as these two teams are playing. And after coming off another series where both those teams play hard and physical basketball. So I don't know what we're going to see tonight. I really don't. Yeah, this has kind of been this series, I, I think, has been a big disappointment for a lot of basketball fans. I think we we when we saw this matchup, I think a lot of fans' eyes lit up and thought, man, this is going to be awesome, right? This is going to mm-hmm. be a great series. You got Butler, you got Tatum, you got two franchises with so much success over the years. And, you know, they went at it, uh, you know, when it was uh, uh, LeBron and, and Paul Pierce and those guys back in the day. And, uh, you know, now, but it's just kind of been like the whole series so far has been like just, it's been like a, a night a night watching the UFC. You get all excited, and then it's like, uh, it, 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 all these fights stink. Um, <laughs> all these fights stink. None of these fights were any good. I mean, there might you might have seen a good punch or two thrown, or a, but that's it. After six hours of 
of watching am, all these cards. But I gotta um, tell you, man, I'm not a fan of the UFC. Because no, like, I, I, I don't watch the UFC. I'm not. I'm just. I'm, that's why I, I made the joke is because the UFC never has never entertained me once. The personalities don't entertain. I don't find any of it compelling. I don't find uh, I, or I think real by the nine way. Nine out of ten uh, of these UFCs just are like ah. I mean, it was just they're they're just crap. I mean, they're crap fights, and uh, none of it compels me. The personalities on the table, no, nothing's compelling to to me. I don't know. I don't. And people get so excited, and at the end of the day, to me, it's always like I, most of the times I read Twitter, it's always just like you know this fight sucked or this guy sucked or he got he got killed in the first round or whatever. I mean, so it's like all these great matchups. Oh, oh, and the guy gets beaten into submission in the first round. That's kind of how this game, this series is going. Like, oh, this is good. And it's just one team's beating the ears off of the other team every other some, night. Some guy gets wrestled to the ground, gets his arm twisted, he yeah, taps out. You're like, this is what straight. I waited six months for. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, this is what you've been hyping up for two, three, four weeks, Dana White. And then it's just like, you know, it, it, so. To me, it's just ve- it's been very that that kind of level of sports entertainment this series, um, and you can only hope for. And the NBA's really got to cross their fingers. They can only hope for you know you know a great Warriors and whoever they face matchup. And I think the better matchup, I think for TV for the viewership, I think even just on the floor matchups um, going at it every night would be Boston and, and Golden State. I just think, I think- that the guard play. Uh, would go to the next level with Tatum and Brown and Thompson and Curry and and you know uh, love to see Pritchard and 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 Pool who gets the better of each you know uh, of each other off the bench as far as you know who who contributes more. Uh, I think there'd be some great you know inside you know inside play with guys like you know Kaminga and Looney banging into Horford and Williams and these guys. So uh, I'd like to see Probably. that series. As a by sports fan, come, by the time we come back on Tuesday, because obviously Monday there's no show. Yeah. By the, by, by the time we come back on Tuesday, I honestly believe we will have this figured out. And I think for the better sake of the NBA, gun control. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, you mean basketball, sports? Yeah. Okay. I think it'll be Golden State, and I think it'll be Boston, and I, and I feel that way because for the outcome of the NBA. And nothing's wrong with Miami being presented in the NBA Finals because I think that's a great rent organization. If they're deserving, then they're deserving, right? Yeah. But I think for the NBA to have a traditional franchise like the Celtics play a team that's now solidified themselves as a household name in the Warriors and Curry, I think it'll be great. But we'll find out. See y'all next week. Brownie and Lawhead, take care. Peace. Of yourself, man. Peace. Have a great holiday.